with David Emmanuel Noel, and welcome to another OK Artist interview. Today I'm joined by Dida Eled, regarded as one of the greatest jazz guitarists this side of the Mississippi. Thank you for your time for, for coming to, to speak to us. Uh, firstly, I, I would like to ask you about your beginnings as a, as a, as a musician. Your, your musicianship included earning a spot in the Israeli army band uh, right. and a scholarship to, uh, to study jazz. But can you tell us more about these experiences and, and how you sure. actually decided to get into music as a, as a career? Yeah. Okay, so it's a lot of different things, but I'll start somewhere. Sure. So the army is something everyone in Israel has to do when they're 18. You know that? Right. right. 18, we all get drafted to the army and we have, basically because all of the population at, at the age of 18 gets drafted, you have all the jobs that you have in society in the army. So I was in the army band. Uh, yeah. Right. So what I did there, I mean, I actually got a, a special, I, was, I auditioned and I got this, they called it outstanding musician, which is like you get nice conditions for serving so you can keep your maintain your you know your craft mm -hmm. basically they don't want to ruin the arts of israel and imagine all the dancers musicians everyone that works on the craft from an early age they have to stop at 18 for two three years it's not good for the art so they want to have some spots for people that are like serious about their craft to maintain it right so I was that. So I was like, I got accepted as an outstanding musician, but I served in a band. So my service was actually super fun because I was playing with people. Basically, my the audience was were soldiers and we were traveling the country playing for them. And that was their that was their time, you know, time off from training. Right. It was actually really special to be there and like be able to do this. Also, for me specifically, it opened up a lot of new new stuff because I think I had what it, they can... I think it's called happy accident. No, how do you say it? But no, it wasn't that. Happy, uh, I know what you mean. It's I know. Blessing in disguise. Disguise, right. No. Anyway, what is blessing in disguise? Ah, that I didn't get accepted. So once I was... Okay, I knew that I'm going to be in... Um, outstanding musician. Sorry, I'm making this long, but I'm telling you a story. No, take your time. Okay. So I got <laughs> I got um, accepted as an outstanding musician with a lot of, or a few, like 10 of my very good friends from the same art department in a, like music uh, school that we went to. Mm. So we all came as best friends together. We were all super into jazz and were like very good at what we did because we were like nerds jazz nerds in school and then the people like the people that were responsible in the army made bands from us and they made one this prestige jazz band and my best friend was the main singer of it my best friend and i was the only one from our group that wasn't in that band like they needed one guitar player and the other one the guy got accepted and i was like it was the first time i felt like a huge rejection yeah. in music Maybe in life. I don't know. It felt like so disappointing. And they put me in this super random um, small ensemble that the goal of the ensemble was to travel the country easily. So they, did, they didn't want us to have a lot of equipment. So we could only have like a bo bongos and acoustic guitar yeah. and classical singers. And I didn't know the people that they put me with. And it felt like, you know, I'm like in this... They're going to play big events because they're like a big band. And I'm like traveling in a small van with like a bongo or a conga. With, <laughs> and like people I don't know to like do whatever. Anyway, it felt, oh, I have to turn something up. It felt so annoying. Actually so sad. I was heartbroken. Also because my best friend was the main singer of that. And I was like, why? Why is she doing that? And I'm like playing the yeah. acoustic guitar in this weird ensemble. Anyway. Why blessing in disguise? Because I feel like if I was in that ensemble, I would get like hidden be in in the background of this, like playing guitar in this thing. And being in that ensemble actually made me start wanting to sing because I had more room there. Mm. And it made me also like realize that I'm actually very interested in a lot of other 
genres and not just jazz. I was a very much like a jazz nerd before. And it was the first time I started like really diving into like rock and roll and Israeli rock and roll and other stuff like that. Mm. And it was kind of like developing as a secret. Like I didn't tell anyone that I want to sing for a while. I started taking voice lessons with this weird guy that, you know, voice lesson can be very weird. It can be like, oh, 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 but he invented the most weird <laughs> exercise. Anyway, so I had this, I started developing this secret world where I'm like starting to practice singing and like singing rock songs and like other stuff. And it, I think being in that less professional setting and like less committing was helping me like explore things that i wouldn't allow myself before so very very also unusual. being around people that are new and not my friends that knew me as one thing you know yeah, yeah and actually that's why i think even if i didn't know exactly why when i did it when i was 20 years old that's why i moved to new york i wanted to throw myself into a new situation where people don't know me as one thing so i can see what i want to be you know Mm -hmm. And I was way less shy to sing in New York. For some reason, most people, I, I think, would think it's more scary to sing in New York because it's so big and everyone is so good. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was less scary because no one knew me here. So I could present myself. I had a gig and like people ask me, what do you do? And I say, I play guitar and sing. You know, I can. I had an opportunity to re... re yeah, re what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I feel like when I was... So that really freed me from like a very specific scene when everyone knew me as one thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, as you say, moving to New York does that. You, you have a, a sense of, um, it's a big place. You feel very lonely, but equally you feel there's a level of camaraderie because we're all sort of in the same situation of being, um, uh, free to explore, free to, uh, yeah. you know, explore. Listen, after a while here too, I might feel like, I think it's basically, what happens when you change something you're throwing mm. in a new situation and, and it's, it's scary, but it's an opportunity for changing yourself yeah. and growing in directions. You maybe it's harder when you're around people that know you so well and kind of accept, expect something from you. From you. No, that's true. That's true. You have to like, hello, I'm actually this now. Like, yeah. it's a little scary, but you know what I mean? So with regards to the guitar, particularly as a as the instrument i mean the, were, were you always was there always a sort of an inclination towards the guitar or was it just something that because of your exposure to to uh to the army to to the bands that you know it, it's something that you just fell into you know what what's still i was the playing guitar since i was 11 so it's way before that's why i got this outstanding musician why did i start the guitar i actually saw a father of someone in my class playing guitar on an israeli holiday that like you have a campfire thing and everyone mm. plays. No, someone like usually someone that knows how to play like a father or something or a mother of someone in the class would play and everyone sing along. And I saw him when I was 10 years old and I was like, oh my God, I want to do that. And then I told my parents, which not, no one in my musician, in my family is a musician. I told them, listen, I really want to play guitar. I must do it. They got me a guitar. They agreed. They got me a guitar teacher. And the year after, I was already mm. with with the same father. We were playing together and singing every all the songs. I even have a picture of that. Of right. course, it's so funny because I dressed exactly like him too. <laughs> I was like wearing a you know a Canadian tux, like a whole jeans. Uh -huh. Anyway, very sweet. So that's how I started guitar. Later. I actually started also playing the drums a few years after, and I really liked that too. But I don't know why I kept the guitar more than the drums. It was like at, at 15 when I got into this really good high school for jazz, mm. I felt like I kind of had to pick to pick what I'm going to focus on because I wanted to become master at something. So I, need, I couldn't do two things. Yeah. And for some reason, the guitar picked. It wasn't like, you know, in this age, you don't really make decisions. Yeah. The in a way. Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just happened. Honestly, I don't care about the guitar so much. I just happened to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I care about the guitar, but you know what I mean? I'm not a guitar nerd, like in the way that like the instrument, like many people want a lot of equipment and like 
will ask what kind of a guitar is that I just want like to play music and my guitar the guitar is my tool to do that mm-hmm. and and we've obviously uh, reaped the benefits of that um, I mean you've played with you know many uh, accomplished uh, musicians great artists um, Roy Hargrove um, for yeah. example um, Greg Gregory Hutchinson could you explain how your your experiences of, of working with these artists and how they oh, sure. affect your career yeah so I'm gonna put it in our in our time frame that we had so I I finished the army and I decided to move to New York because I got a scholarship to attend the new school here which is a really good school I also got a full scholarship from Berkeley College of Music but I decided that I really want to go to New York okay. I convinced my parents that if you I went for like two months and I told them I'll audition in New York. If they give me a good enough scholarship, I'll go there. Right. And they were like, okay, because they were like, why are you not going for the full scholarship? And I was like, I promise I'm going to get something good from new school and I want to be in New York. I just mm. really thought that New York is like the scene I want to... Because school is cool, but I was already like into being in a city and playing more than like just being in a classroom. Sure, sure. So I knew that's the like real school so Boston is nice but like it's more about the school being there and New York is like just being in New York yeah, yeah so anyway that relates to like I started going out a lot to the to the places in New York when I was at school and I was dating this drummer and introduced we went to smalls jazz club mm. the coolest bar, um, jazz club yeah. and he introduced me to this Italian club trumpet player named Fabio Morghera, great musician. And Fabio was intrigued by me. I was like a young girl, like with good energy. <laughs> and I told him, he asked me, when are you playing? And I luckily, right when I moved to New York, three weeks after I got a regular gig, a weekly gig at this wine bar in the West Village. I was just like walking by and I was like, hey, do you have like live music here? They're like, No, but we would like to like I told them let's do it let's and they said okay let's give it a try on Sunday night I came Sunday night with my guitar and my amp and I called the bass player mm-hmm. and I played it and then they were like what are you doing Sundays the rest of your life <laughs> <laughs> anyway so so yeah I was I got that gig and that was like kind of where I could start doing my thing I played there every Sunday and I called me so when I met Fabio I was like where are you playing I told him I'm playing every Sunday at this bar Okay, next Sunday he shows up with a trumpet and like sits in with a band. And he does that for like a few weeks in a row. And I'm like, hey, it's so fun. This great trumpet player is sitting in. After three weeks, he, we sat on the bar after the gig and he was like, listen, I have this connection with a, a label in Italy and I think they'd be interested in making a record with you, for you. And I'm like, I never even thought about making a record. I was 20 or 21 years old. Hmm. And, you know, in jazz, you don't even think about records. It's less of, like, singer-songwriter, you write songs. You just want to play a good solo and, like, sound good mm-hmm. every day. More mm-hmm. than, like, thinking about it, a work of, like, yeah. a record. Mm-hmm. Especially at 20 years old. So I was like, I just wanted to sound good on the guitar. And it takes a few hours a day to practice it. And, like, you don't have room to think about, let's make something that will last forever. Anyway, Fabio... He's like, you should make a record now because I see like you're so good at what you're doing and I think you'll go in many directions and you should make a straight ahead jazz recording right now because you sound so good. Let's just do it. Mm. And I was like, okay, let's do it. But what will we record? And then he was like, whatever you do here, we'll take it to the studio. Like we'll pick the best songs of this bar game. Okay, anyway, a month after we go into the studio. So we needed to pick a band and... There was a really cool thing in New York that happened for just two or three weeks that Roy Hargrove was running this jam session at the Jazz Gallery. He never did something like that, I feel. And it was like a jam session led by him. And I went and I, I played. And he kind of liked me. And it was like a good vibe. And then I told Fabio, wow, I wish Roy would be a special guest on the record. Mm. But then Fabio said, let's ask him. And we asked and he said, yeah. So I was like super lucky and kind of like, bold to even ask i don't know if today i would do that you know like hey roy hargrove do you want to be on my record i'm i'm a 21 year old just moved from israel yeah. anyway so he agreed and then a month after we were at the studio also gregory hutchinson the best drummer in the world the same 
just mm-hmm. asked if he would want to be in it. I just went, I told Fabi who I would really, my first, you know, choices and they agreed. And I played with this great bass player who played a lot, the bar gig with me. So he already knew the songs. Mm-hmm. And we had a thing. So I felt like I want to have one guy there that is like, we know each other well. Talon, yeah. a great Israeli bass player. Anyway, and then we did the first recording, which was really good for me. I didn't even know then how much it will be because I just kind of went with the went with Fabio's energy and did it, mm-hmm. trying to sound good, not thinking about what it means in the world. But it opened a lot of doors for me. I was just like attending the new school, and all of a sudden, I was invited to play jazz jazz festivals in Italy and like different places. It opened up a lot of doors for me, and some I got some good press. Chris actually approached me after the album was released and I was like, did I really love this album? Like I should do press for it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I didn't Good. even think there's a, I didn't know that there's a publicist in making records, you know, anyway. So this was the very first experience that was kind of really cool to have, because it made me start thinking about oh. what it means to be a band leader and have a career at, oh. a, at 21, you know, when I just started school. Yeah. So obviously you're on a, a a successful journey, you're on an upward trajectory. We can we can see that. You've you've worked with some of um, the the most talented people in the industry. Are there any um, uh, key artists that um, you know come to mind that you would like to work with sooner rather than later? Inspire you to. to I mean, collab- there are a lot of artists I really love. To be completely honest, I think I developed my style sense like it sounds a little funny but like it's 10 years after 11 years after that record mm-hmm. and it's like i want to collaborate with people but mostly like i don't know engineers and producers that will probably help me get what my ideas across right or like musicians that will play on a record but i honestly really love my band now so i feel like we're we're a few years playing together and it's just getting like so yeah, there are people like of behind the scenes that I would love to work with. Some artists inspire me to make things, but like, and I would love to do a duet with them or like a special thing, but oh. it's less of like, it's a little less of a jazz world where like just people jump in and record on your record. Even though, you know, I'll have great musicians sing with me or like play, but yeah, I'm just yeah. aware that it's less of the focus. My focus is more like to make good songs and make mm. nice production that like helps the song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand. And, like, and push myself to like, you know, come up with more ideas and like yeah. creating things. So so that said. But I love doing things with artists and I would love to like, you know, make bills with amazing artists and like nights where I'll play, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well that said then, and and from your own experiences, if uh if a if a, if a young budding twenty one year old approaches you and says, you know, um can you be on my on my on my record? Uh, what you you'll be you'll be welcoming that. If it if, it, if they if love it, the music for sure. Yeah, good. If they love the music and feel like what I do can contribute it, if not, I can be involved like in spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I also feel like you know some guitar players can do everything, like can be dressed up. I don't know how to say it. Like there's an animal that changes it looks by where it at what is it called oh like a chameleon yeah so like some people are like that which is an amazing skill to have Hmm. i'm less of that i feel like i can play like me so like if i feel that would contribute to someone's sound i'd be honored and happy to to be in it but if not i can like help in other ways you know right yeah but less of a chameleon with my guitar and singing i feel like some people are just getting better at what specifically the sound they go for. Mm. Mm. Some are like just better at like becoming different things for different needs. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for that. Please tell us more about um, uh, Love of the Tiger, um, okay. its origins and how it came about. So this is a completely different project, as you can hear. Um, for many years, since we talked about this beginning of in New York and jazz, jazz kid that I was, I already made one record that is a more song based. Hmm. And this one is totally that, like it's mostly original songs and it's all like 
not jazz at all, basically. And I just wanted to, like, for years I've been super into, like, writing songs. And I wanted to have my own songs. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought at all. Okay. Well, so, I'll tell wind. you what. It, yeah. it came from a lot of places. It's a process of many years. So let me tell you a little stories about that. A few years ago, I spent a little more time in Israel for different reasons. And I met this amazing guy that was, is, is a huge inspiration in my life. And we, we ended up being in a weird band together called the Ragtime Vampires. We only played after midnight at bars without announcing, like showing up. Uh -huh. And had like bandanas with blood on it because <laughs> we were vampires. <laughs> it's a funny band with like, fast songs in like witty Hebrew but like jog band vibes like seven people in the band anyway mm -hmm. this was a really fun band and the main thing that I really was inspired by Yami and I feel like we had a really good connection and like inspiration to make things together so what happened is after I started getting back more to New York and to Europe and like I was less in Israel but I started stealing Yami Yami is the guy um, to go on weird trips with me in Europe mm. and to do like little writing residencies. Like we would spend a week somewhere and write songs. We did really? it four times, twice in Berlin, once in Switzerland. No, twice in Berlin and twice in Switzerland. Different things made these trips happen. Like we, I was called to play a show in Switzerland and I called, I asked Yami to be, to play with me. Mm -hmm. We stayed there for a week after in a small hotel in a very small village in Switzerland and we wrote songs there after and it's so funny because there's some so few people there so mm. like I feel like the surroundings and the people really became came into the songs mm. and then after that week we played the owner of the club that invited us the songs and he was like excited that we wrote basically songs about Mori in a way or like there's a lot of references to the to this village yeah. So he invited us two years after to come back and play a show and we made it like, we called it Made in Muri and it was a show about this song. Like I made it as if yeah. all the songs are about this place. Yeah. Anyway, and then we stayed again for another week and wrote more. So basically the collection of these songs all come from these weird trips in Europe and they have a lot of stories of things or people we met there. But okay. obviously it's about me and my life, but, but a lot of these things are fun things that we had. Mm. It, we put in the songs in some ways and um, it's fun to get to take things that you see you know where you are and like use them for the songs anyway so the songs came from there and then so that's one story of the writing of this song then for years I was actually trying to produce these songs into like a, you know a final product right. and that was not easy at all to the point where I was almost like not gonna do this record I played them live many times and like, it was great. But like every time I was sitting with a producer and trying to make a recording, then I'm like, this is the song. Mm. You know? It didn't work. It yeah. always felt like it's trying to be something or it's like, doesn't sound like, you know, it. Oh, right, right. almost always. And like, it was, I learned a lot about the songs from these things. And like, I met a lot of amazing, talented people, but I felt like it's not it. And I actually was giving it up. I was like, okay, I don't think I want to do this record. Mm. And that was before our fourth trip to Berlin. And in Berlin, after I was like, really, re I was giving, I gave up on this acoustic thing. I thought like, okay, these songs, I just can record them. Bye. And let's do something else. And we tried. Our challenge in that trip was to re make songs right into a recording. Because I felt like, instead of having a whole song and then going to the studio, let me, like, like they do in hip-hop, make up the song into the recording. Maybe it will sound like it, because there won't be this extra stage. Right. right? That's how many pop and hip-hop artists go about making songs. So we met and we brought another friend who was, like, more into the computer, and he made beats, and I made, like, we made the songs into the beats. And that actually worked, and it sounds convincing and good. And it was like, it became a bizarre electronic EP that I'm actually going to release. I love it. But, so that was 
I was so excited about actually I thought nothing will happen with it because it's so different than what I do so I was like excited about it and know that it's really it has this energy of like fire energy yeah. but I also like didn't take it seriously but then I played it I don't know a month or two after to a few people and they're like did I we think this is it like do that and then I was like okay and I put up this custom like I found with my friend a whole bodysuit in white mm-hmm. and we and I performed it in a club at night like twice just two songs with like an SPD you know like the drum mm-hmm. machine mm-hmm. and with the custom and like it was a whole new thing I was trying and it was right before the pandemic and I was I was going to finish these songs and like make music videos and go for that mm-hmm. but then the pandemic hit and like obviously I didn't do it anymore anyway then sorry I lost my train what happened is that I was it the pandemic hit and I stopped for a second the work on this record mm. on this like electronic EP mm. and then I was kind of bored at home I started like recording myself because it was pandemic there was nothing to do and so I started be, just recording guitar and singing for practice just to practice actually knowing how to make nice recordings at home mm. but there was like Again, pandemic, I couldn't see anyone. What else am I doing? So I made this challenge. Let's record anything. It doesn't matter what song. Just to like working a little bit on like getting a good sound. So then I recorded these songs I had because that's what I had. Like the acoustic ones from previous trips. And then weirdly, it started sounding good. And I sent it to my guys in the band that was playing in New York with me before the pandemic. And they yeah. like were also bored at home. So they also added their own like little parts. And we got into a few versions that sounded like this is what these songs are wanting to be. Mm. And something about that moment was like, all right. You know, when you finish one song, two songs, and it feels like it, you know, you're like paved the way to like, this is going to be the record. Now let's just do all the songs like that. Yeah. So yeah. that was really big, like, oh, this is it, finally. And then I wanted a, a mixing engineer that will help us like finish it up. And I called this guy, I got a recommendation for a guy named Phil and I hit him up and he right away, like we, we hit it up and like, we have a plan to go upstate. He was like, let's, I'm happy to mix your songs, but if you have more, let's track more songs and then mix it all together. So it's more cohesive. So I was like, great. He found us an amazing deal going upstate with a band mm-hmm. and recording in a house that has like a tape machine and really cool stuff. And we're saying, let's spend a week there, track all the songs that you haven't tracked yet and mix it all together. And we were good. And I was like so excited. I felt really a good connection with this feel. And like, you know, we're just ready to finish it. It was like this energy of like, great. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes before we get to this house, four hours away from New York, I'm asking Phil, so how do you know Spencer Murphy, the guy who recommended Phil? And he's like, I don't know Spencer Murphy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's the guy who recommended working with you. And he said, no, Spencer Zahn told me he recommended it. And I'm like, I know Spencer Zahn, but I never talked to him. Anyway, I realized that I was with the wrong Phil in the car. Right. And, but it was funny because, you know, I knew that I wanted to be with this Phil. And it was like, again. It's a chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Or like, yeah, we just yeah. knew, I just knew that this is it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was super fun. And then we just did that week and it was easy from there. You know, the hard thing was to figure out what it's going to be. But once it was figured out, it was just like really good people involved and everyone was like wanting to make the best. And it was great. Mm. I love of the tiger. Wow. So many stories. I hope I'm not getting you more confused. But I'll no. Tell you- I don't know. It's it's well. It's it's always intriguing and uh, to know the background behind um, rec- records, EP, yeah. album because there's so many, you know, very you know layers and and yeah. uh, and, and you know reasons for for producing any form of. Uh, right. So, so the only thing I'll tell you why Love of the Tiger. One of those trips, when I there's a song called Love of the Tiger. So the reason for writing this song is that on one of those trips with Yami. We ended the trip kind of like having fun with the idea that maybe I should step into this character when I perform of like a Thai royalty because the king of Thailand, he passed away in 2016, but he was a a blues guitar player. Did you know that? 
And But everyone in Thailand was obsessed with blues guitar. Right. So we thought it would be so cool if I was like wearing silk Thai dresses and be like a Thai royalty guitar player that sings songs. So we were just making fun and like, you know, having fun with this idea. But then I went to Russia on tour. <laughs> mm. And it was in the back of my mind, but I started listening to a lot of psychedelic Thai music from the 60s, like pop psychedelic, really good stuff, by the way. I don't know if you ever listened to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Line frequency and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so then I did that. And then in Russia, I had a day off in a weird hotel and I started writing because I was listening a lot to this Thai stuff, this Thai melody. Ta -ta -da 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 mm. Lala, which is the... theme song of the record and again like the other things i didn't take it seriously but i recorded it and it was like cute i made this like little thai blues song mm. in that hotel that night and then i forgot about it and then i went to israel and we had a show with the vampires and on a rehearsal i just played it a little for fun in between like when we were sitting and i found a tiny guitar and i was just trying it out yeah and people like dita what is that that's kind of hip because i was singing it in very high pitch then And then Yami and I finished the song and like, let's make it a song. So that's Love of the Tiger. And the reason I picked it as the theme song, one, I like the track, but also my dad is obsessed with tigers. I don't know if you saw the video, but that's my real dad. And he's like, that's his, his life. He has this office with the tiger collection. And my whole life, I had this like weird dad that always dresses up like with tiger items and it has tattoos all over himself. And yeah. calls himself Pelly the Tiger. Okay, so, right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I was I going to... I just went along with it. It was fun and I like had the tiger in, in my things. Yeah. No, I, I was going to ask about the album cover too because, um, I mean, obviously the, the, it has got a tiger in it. That, that is of interest. I mean, what, uh, how, did you, how did you design the, the album sleeve, the, the record sleeve? I worked at it very hard. I really enjoyed making the... the visuals for the record. I don't know if you saw all the videos and the, and the album cover, but I put a lot of thought into all of these because it's, it's super fun. And I met a lot of really cool, talented people. And I feel like figuring the visuals was really another big creative, like, mm. output that I, I wanted to explore, you know? So... It's part, had, part, like, part of the album, I guess. It's part of the whole... Yeah, it's of, a big part yeah. of the album. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's how people know it, you know? Mm. And also, it's just so fun to make things, like to make the music, then make a video, make a cover. I just enjoy all these elements. So then, and when you care about something, you want it to be presented in the best way, you know? So, like, I wanted to have a sick album cover. And for, mm. year, or for a year or something since I have the record ready, and I've been, like, not ready to release it yet, but, like, working on the release, I had this image that I really loved that inspired me. Mm -hmm. of a record from the 70s and it's kind of like the inspiration for what my album cover it's a mini ripperton i don't know if you know her Anthony, yeah, yeah, it yeah. has a cover with a lion in it yeah also sitting on a couch yeah yeah, I'm yeah. Not this, even though it could be a secret but honestly it's not a secret because i feel like i i took inspiration from it in the best way like it's it's different enough but it's also like mm. you can see that it's a gesture yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Anyway, so then, but I like my version of it. I feel like it's more modern or something or like more me, you know? Mm. But I wasn't, I love that. And then when I decided that the album is Love of the Tiger, I, in Israel, I knew, actually, when I saw that picture, I was like, actually, the album name was supposed to be Showgirls. No, Showgirl, because I have a song called Showgirls. I wanted to call them show girl. Right. And then I wanted to call them show girl. And then, in fact, I lost it. But then I, I saw that again, the mini ripper tone. And I was like, fuck, I want to make this album cover, but I'll do it with the tiger because this is more related to my life. And there is the song. Mm -hmm. I found this Israeli artist that I love her photography on film. And I asked her to do it because I felt like she does things in this vibe. Oh. And I was in Israel for a trip. And then I found a taxidermy tiger. Everything was last minute, like a week before. And I was like, okay, let me get a tiger in the shoot. I found a guy in a small town in Israel that has taxidermy, does taxidermy. I mm -hmm. rented the tiger from him. 
We had it in the shoot. This ended up being the best picture. So I decided, okay, maybe I should call my album Love of the Tiger then. And that's it. Okay. I wasn't entirely sure whether or not it was um, uh, some sort of tiger that was photo photoshopped into the into the frame. But no, it's, it's nice to know that it's, uh, yeah, it was actually uh, there, there in the flesh, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. excellent. I've got a tiger's out. You know, what other projects are you currently working on? First, I kind of want, I hope to play more shows with this. So, like, I have some shows coming up and feel like it's time to now, like, you know, have more people being, know about this music. And I feel like the best way to introduce this is to play it live. Mm -hmm. So, that's, like, what I want to focus on in the next year. But also, I have this other electronic project that I want to finish and release. And I have this new album that I'm working on that's kind of a concept album right. that's called Teen Model. It's Teen about... I write it with my friend and she was a model when she was a teenager and we already have a few songs that I really love and we're working on that project. It's a big, um, it's very important for me. Good, good. Well, I wish you the very best of uh, luck with that. I I'm looking forward to having... I also want to make another jazz record soon, by the way. Yeah. Right. And in terms of the jazz records, in terms of your projects, um, where can people find further information about you uh, i think i'm most active on instagram but also you know i have a website do the music or like they can see all the videos we're talking about on youtube right all the platforms they Excellent. can listen to love of the tiger on spotify and apple music right well guys uh, you, you know where to go uh everywhere basically you can can stream it and download it so um yeah, go go listen to it. Go watch the video. It's uh, definitely worth my recommendation.